Hi everybody, thank you so much for being here. My name is Bonnie Bonadeo, and I am a speaker, coach, author, and radio host. Now that's what I say that I do, but what I previously did in the 38 years that I've been in this industry is everything you can imagine as a role in the industry. So I was a stylist for uh, a salon manager, a distributor, a manufacturer rep, and I produced some of the greatest shows in this industry. But I always had this desire to be an entrepreneur. And there was this light bulb moment, and it was during the time where acquisitions and mergers were happening in our industry, and it was becoming um, education was becoming less relevant, and educators were becoming more available. And one of them said, Bonnie, can you help me book? And I thought, this is a great idea for a business. And I started an agency called The Beauty Agents. And I was kind of the middleman, the go-between person to be able to help people with education to find buyers for the education. And that was great. And I was starting to have some amazing success until the recession hit, which was just within a year of me starting my own business. And I owned a lot of real estate at the time. So I was, it, it was very devastating for me financially to be in that position. But what came after that really kind of put me into this place of how is my business going to succeed? And that's called social media. So at this point now, nobody needed an agent because they could easily uh, go on to social media and promote themselves. And so I was wondering how is my business going to survive? And in fact, it wasn't surviving and I started to fail and I'm thinking, why am I failing? And this is really, really not going to be good for me. And as I kind of progressed along, I thought, I need to make a decision. And I finally, at six years into being very resourceful as an entrepreneur, I decided that's it. I'm on my knees, hands in the air. I give up. I surrender. And in that moment, there was this amazing transformation that happened with me. I realized I'd made the worst mistake of my life, but I'd already committed to another job. So I was like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And it was frightening to think that I was now giving up something that I was so passionate about. But I went, moved forward, and I went into this job. And honestly, within one week, I was out of there in two weeks, but within one week, I literally saw the worst leadership I'd ever seen in the history of my life. And I thought, no, that's not okay, and I cannot continue to stand by and watch this happen. I know I've got the skills. I loved being a good salesperson. I loved being a great leader. I knew I had the skills to be able to make this work. And that's how I kind of got invited into the coaching world and the coaching business. So yes, I say that I'm a speaker, coach, author, and radio host. But ultimately, this is what I do. I help people authentically connect with themselves so they can connect with others. And I do it in two very distinct arenas. One is brand and the other is leadership. Because ultimately what I want is for people to be passionate and love the life that they live. And so I have to say, how do you define success? How do you define success in a way that actually supports the passion and the drive, but also the profitability that you want to be able to have as a business? Well, after finally 10 years of being in business by myself, I see the, 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 the work, the fruits of my labor the success as a coach, the success as a speaker, I'm a four-time international best-selling author, and I have a beautiful radio show uh, with 50 plus thousand listeners um, that check in with me every month and listen to my show. All about beauty. So I'm glad to be able to have made this transformation, but I didn't do it alone. I did it with coaches. And one of the reasons why, of course, I am a coach, because I really do believe that sometimes you need to be um, in an educational capacity. Your business needs you to grow first. Sometimes it's not about the business growth. Sometimes it's not about the data that spits out of a computer or your software. Sometimes it's about looking at the data that's between your ears. And that's really the type of coaching that I do with my clients. I'm emotionally intelligent certified, and so it allows me to be able to look at areas of opportunity that are up here, the areas that we question ourselves as human beings. So let's talk about the branding piece that makes more sense to be able to <laughs> that makes more sense to be able to like look at that. I have two pillars, as I said, brand and leadership. So in the branding piece, I know that these words get mixed up a lot. Vision, mission, culture, marketing. And I want to define all of that. So first, marketing is sales with a plan. So it's the strategy, it's the actual toolbox. It's everything that you do in order to grow your business and it's part of a plan of action that you've put together. So data would be part of a plan of action in here. 
Brand is sales with a soul. It's very personal. It's about the vision and the mission and the things that are within you that you cross over. Now, when you look at vision and mission and culture, those are all great things to have internally, but do they externally support the consumer or the client that you're attracting? See, a brand is designed to build and attract. And then the saying goes, if you brand it, they will come. All right, now let's cross over to the other pillar on leadership. And I want you to guys to think of these two things as the bookends. And in between would be all the operational opportunities for you to succeed. This would be your numbers, this would be other operational uh, support systems, data, uh, policies, procedures, all of that stuff. But leadership is another important main pillar here. So when we look at leadership, it, it should be able to support you in maintaining and sustaining your business, okay? So here's the questions I would ask from a brand perspective. Why do I exist? How am I a contribution to others? What am I offering? And it's not just in service or products, but what am I offering as a human, a contribution as a human, my attributes? And then the final question is, who am I offering that to? When you look at the leadership pillar, you should be able to look at the questions that say, who am I being as a leader? And how am I connecting with the people in my business? And the people in your business should include both people, your team and your clients. I support and bridge the gap between for leaders to be able to say, it's great to be liked, but it's also good to be effective because most leaders want to be liked. And so we try to bridge that gap between effective and liked. Now, one of the things that I heard at the conference this weekend was data without action is just noise. And I want to kind of add a caveat to that. Data without the right action is just noise. And then I'm going to kind of flip the switch on it and I'm going to give you a pain point sometimes to how we relate to data in relation to leadership. Data without clarity, compassion, and curiosity can result in conflict. Because what we know to be true is that we're emotional beings. And second, logic. First, emotional, second, logic. So when we take data, which is very logical, and we apply it to an emotional human being, we sometimes end up in a result of conflict. And part of it is because we haven't been trained as a leader to have that curiosity, that, that way of being able to be curious enough and compassionate enough in, in, a, in a conversation that supports growth of another. So here's an example of what can happen sometimes. You might be sitting down with a team member and you're gonna be able to share with them some metrics of, they might be down in retailing or down in pre-booking. And you're trying delicately to handle this conversation and, but anytime they hear this comparison, it, as a human, they feel like they're not good enough. And this is usually how it's translated in their head. My boss hates me, I need to find a new job. Or it might translate to, why doesn't she understand me? She always picks on me. Or I can't be the only one that's not doing well in retail at this point. Doesn't he know that everybody's buying it on Amazon now? That's the conversation in here, the data between the ears. And that's the one as a leader that I work on and coach diligently to be able to support you in that. We know that there's two areas of, of great challenges and opportunity in our industry. One is new, finding really great new talent and really great quality clients. The other is existing, managing the, the value to our current team and then adding further value to our current clients. And when you look at those two things, if you have a strong brand, message, clarity, and you're able to promote that, and you have strong leadership, maintain, sustain your business, then you have a successful business. So I want you to think about how your business is set up to be able to support you. How do you define success? I finally reached this point for me that I define success as I'm passionate and joyful about what I do. And I wanna be able to have other people live the life they love with their passions and joys as well. So here's how I want you to be able to connect with me. I want you to think that I'm a product and I have some directions for you. So here's, a, here's how you would use me as a, as a coach. There's an opportunity for you to be able to look at a try me by me type of package. Okay, This would be the sample size package. And this would be online, do it yourself type programs that you can access and they don't take a lot of resources, time, money and energy. They don't take a lot of resources to tap into a little bit of the content and the approach that I take in being able to train and coach. Then there's, when you're ready to make the commitment, there's the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. 
And this one-on-one -on -one opportunity means that you're aware that maybe your two pillars, branding, leadership, are not strong enough to sustain your business long-term. And then of course, there's the fast-tracked approach, which is an immersion of a two-day live event that I offer. And here's how you can find out about any one of these things, plus take advantage of some of the free tools and offers that I'd like to share with you today. You can text 623-810-2810, and if you're interested in more of the branding, then just type the word brand in, and it's gonna take you to the page where there's gonna be free resources and other opportunities for you. If you're interested in the leadership side, then type in curious, again, free resources and tools, and it's gonna share with you some of the other opportunities as well. And of course, put in brand and then type in curious as well, and you'll get access to both of those opportunities. So, again, Look here and decide how are you defining success? And if you don't feel as that your success has the clarity of message that you need it to be, then I want you to connect with Bonnie.com or find me on social media at Bonnie Bonadeo or at the Beauty Agent Network. Thank you.